Now I'm sure we've all heard of Nessie, you know, the monster of Loch Ness in the Scottish Highlands near Inverness. Heck, we've even done a few videos on her, but did you know that she may actually be from another universe or dimension? Hi, I'm Connor and welcome back to Most Amazing. While she is a mythological beast or cryptid and not necessarily based in science, it's still fun to think about. And with nearly 1500 sightings according to the official tracker, there must be some explanation as to why she's yet to be fully researched or found. Some recent evidence has begun to suggest that this alternate dimension theory may just be the case and today I'm gonna show you 10 signs that parallel universes exist and that Nessie may just be a visitor from one all right Let's get into it. Number 10. Very recently, in September of 2022, for those of you watching from the future, which, by the way, how's it going there? If you're watching this in the future, let me know in the comments. Anyway, in September, prominent paranormal scientist and Nessie expert Ron Halliday gave an interview to The Mirror, where he stated his belief that the Loch Ness Monster is from a parallel universe that we just may not be able to perceive. I'll be talking about the insane physics of parallel universes in a little bit, so stick around for that if you want to see me totally nerd out. He stated that many of the sightings and her disappearance thereafter may be explained by certain people being more psychically sensitive and picking up on things that are existing in multiple universes at once, or even something from the past. He went on to say that some people may even walk through portals to another dimension without realizing it, and that is where they may have seen the Loch Ness Monster and other cryptids. With so many sightings across hundreds of years, it's beginning to seem more and more likely that she can actually travel through time and space, and may be a being from another dimension. But the the discussion of portals actually brings us to our number nine, the upside down. One of the many ways that parallel universes are often theorized as operating is that they exist at the same time as ours, but with very minor differences, running next to each other like the branches of a tree. However, this is not the only theory. Scientists are now discovering that there may actually be an upside down, like what is described in Netflix's Stranger Things, a universe that is the exact opposite of ours, existing on top, or rather below, our own, and we may have found a portal to enter it. Scientists at NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or ANITA for short, have been conducting experiments with very interesting results. Their antenna is located where there is the least amount of radio interference so that they can measure as accurately as possible. And they've found that a constant, quote, wind of particles arrives on Earth from outer space. There are subatomic particles called neutrinos detected, some of which have very low energy and mass that is close to zero, and they can pass right through the the Earth, but anything larger or with higher mass gets stopped by the matter of the Earth. Because of this, we should only be seeing these high energy particles coming down from space, but instead they're also seeing some come up from the Earth. And this implies that the particles are actually reversing through time. And this suggests the existence of a parallel universe where time runs backwards and the world exists in opposition with itself. It would have been created at the same time as the Big Bang, with one universe running forward through time and one backwards. After all, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? Very interesting stuff. And maybe that's where Nessie exists, you know, traveling forward and backward through time, and that's why sightings have dwindled over the years, and we may have just found a way to enter it. Number eight, mirror dimension. Now, before I tell you about this next one, give this video a like if you're enjoying it so far. It really helps us out. Now, without spoiling anything for you, in Stranger Things, one of the ways to access the upside down is through portals, some of which exist in water, and scientists may have found found one on the sea floor. And I think that if another one of these exists in Loch Ness, we may have found our answer on where Nessie goes when no one is watching. About two kilometers below the ocean surface in the Gulf of California, marine researchers have been conducting experiments and collecting data from microbes on the sea floor. Way down below, they discovered something incredible, a mirror pool where on the bottoms and inside of fissures of some rocks, there are microbes that move in very strange ways and create a perfect reflection of what is around them. Some of this is caused by individual ecosystems forming near hydrothermal vents that shoot out all sorts of crazy chemicals and microbes from under the earth. The difference between what collects on the edges of these fissures and in the center is baffling scientists, and some believe that you may actually be able to send something through it into the earth, and that may be a way into another dimension. Perhaps the upside down is this where the Loch Ness Monster goes? Number seven. All right, we need to actually discuss a few sightings of Nessie from over the years because they actually help explain where and when she appears and disappears. Sightings have been reported since 564 CE when St. Columbia allegedly had to compel a strange creature to not attack one of their followers. But reports stopped until 1527 when Duncan Campbell sighted a 
terrible beast on the shore of the loch. There were more sightings here and there, but no real evidence until 1933 when Hugh Gray took a picture of what appears to be the hump and fin of our lake dwelling friend. When it was published in a local newspaper, it was accompanied by a note from Kodak, the film company, who stated that the negatives had not been altered in any way. It's strange that all of the pictures of Nessie and other cryptids are so blurry and far away, especially since we all have 4K cameras in our pockets now. But maybe she's just smarter than we think, or she can only appear on film and not digital? Or perhaps she really does fade into another dimension, but there is a live camera set up on Loch Ness if you want to watch out for her yourself. Number six, drop in reports. For the 90 years that Loch Ness monster sightings have been recorded, there were always multiple sightings yearly, and even if some of them turned out to be a hoax, there were still reports. But 2013 was the first year that there were no sightings at all. This came after a string of years with declining numbers of sightings, so it seems a trend was forming, and she had decided to spend less and less time on our plane of existence. But since 2013, reports have skyrocketed, increasing every year to nearly 20 in each of the past few years. Some of this is because of the webcam system that's been set up, combined with the stay-at-home isolation of the past few years, more people are on the lookout, and more sightings have happened. Strange wakes occur in the water, humps are spotted rising out, and strange movements on the shore are just some of the things captured on the webcam. Number five, prehistoric evidence. Now, one of the main theories about what Nessie may be is that she's actually a form of plesiosaur, a sea-dwelling dinosaur that supposedly went extinct about 66 million years ago, along with the rest of the dinosaurs. These were characterized as carnivorous creatures with four fins, long necks, and hump-backed bodies who fed on fish and other sea creatures. They were thought to have existed only in seawater, but in 2021 in the Sahara Desert, paleontologists found new evidence of their existence in freshwater. In what was once an ancient freshwater riverbed, bones were found of small plesiosaurs that must have adapted to move from the ocean and into river and lake systems. And if this could happen in one place, what would stop them from doing the same to enter an ancient river system in Europe and eventually become what we call the Loch Ness Monster? Perhaps if they couldn't physically travel there because a little thing called land was in the way, they traveled through another river, one created and formed from space-time. Speaking of space-time, our number four entry concerns how it can be bent and morphed to do all sorts of crazy things. When Albert Einstein created his theory of special relativity, he explained that the speed of light was a constant, about 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second for my American friends, and that this constant could be observed throughout space and time. But the only way that this could be constant between the two simultaneously is if space and time were linked. So as someone in a rocket approaches the speed of light, they would perceive time to be slower and the lengths of objects to be shorter compared to someone moving at a much slower speed. So in theory, if you could find a way to bend space time, either through some advanced technology or perhaps some mystical energy. You could travel incredible distances or through time near instantly. Along with this, the existence of dark matter, which is a strange form of matter that is invisible, yet incredibly dense and makes up five times more of the universe than normal matter does. It can actually bend gravity and space-time around itself. Is there a large pocket of dark matter in Loch Ness that allows Nessie to bend space around it and move to another time? Perhaps she is actually a dinosaur from the past, unwittingly traveling around and trying to find her way home. Number three, the Mandela Effect. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Mandela Effect, but I'll give a brief summary. Essentially, it's a phenomenon of mass misremembering of events, such as the one where it got its name, where before his death in 2013, many, many people remembered Nelson Mandela having already died in the 1980s. There are countless examples of these collective memory lapses, like Looney Tunes being spelled with O's instead of a U, the Monopoly Man having a monocle, or other small changes in our reality, you know, a glitch in the Matrix, if you will. Lots of people think these changes in their memory prove the existence of many parallel universes where each small change creates an entirely new universe. And maybe that's where Nessie exists, as a collective memory from another universe that we no longer reside in. But the theory of multiple universes existing at once is not the one that I find the most plausible. Number two, the big bounce. Now, this is personally one of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to theoretical physics, which doesn't sound exciting 
I know, but I promise you it's really cool. When the universe was created in the Big Bang, all the particles and energy of the universe were shot out into empty space from a singular point at incredible speeds. This theory suggests that as the universe expands, space time and gravity will both be pulling against it as it expands, eventually reaching a point of equilibrium in a few billion years. And when this happens, one of two things will occur. Either the universe will continue to expand and tear space time, causing the eventual death of the universe, or what I find to be more likely is the forces pulling against the universe will draw it all the way back inwards down to a single point, only to bounce off again, creating another big bang and expanding. This is how parallel universes may function, not because there are many existing at once, but because this universe has and will continue to exist an infinite number of times, expanding and contracting, having minor differences each time. This is where Nessie could come into this, because perhaps she existed in one version of this universe, but not another. And some people are only seeing the echoes of where she once was. I think that the number one spot on this list of evidence may actually be the sheer lack of evidence. Now I know this may be contradictory and not particularly good science, but we're talking about a mythological beast here, so we need to take it a little easy on our expectations. While there have been so many sightings, images captured, and even sounds recorded of the monster, no one has captured it well enough on film or gotten close enough to call it true evidence. Scientists have used sonar, radar, trawled the bottom of the lake, and performed all sorts of experiments to see if it exists and found nothing. Yet there are still so many reports that come up each year, and some of them are pretty convincing. And it makes me wonder if Nessie is smarter than we think. Perhaps even a being of greater intelligence that outwits us and moves between universes, baffling humans in each of them, just for a good time. With so many sightings but so little solid evidence, the Loch Ness Monster truly remains a mystery, and it may just be one that's bigger than we ever imagined. That's all I have for you today. Hope you had fun. I'm Connor. Stay amazing. I'll see you next time.